I once heard a pastor preach through 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 under the following outline. 1. A good church going through a rough time, verses 3 and 4. 2. A good God waiting for the right time, verses 5 through 10. 3. A good man praying in the meantime, verses 11 and 12. Today I wish to reflect on a little of the second point. Paul can speak of the Thessalonians being worthy of the kingdom of God that will come in consummated power when Jesus returns, verses 5 and 11. The context shows that Paul is not supposing that somehow they become worthy enough to be accepted by God in the first place. The idea, rather, is that having become Christians, they are manifesting Christian faith and love, verses 3 and 4, and are persevering in the Christian way despite suffering and trials, verses 4 and 5. This continued display of grace under fire, this perseverance, is evidence of what God is doing in their lives, and as a result, you will be counted worthy of the kingdom. In other words, genuine Christians, by God's grace, persevere in the gospel, and this marks out their fitness for the consummation. In this sense, they prove worthy. 2. God is just, verse 6. Therefore, there will be payback time for those who have cruelly opposed his people, verse 7, and ignored his word. Verse 8. When Christ returns, he will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Verse 8. What is presupposed is that the perfections of God's justice are not manifest until Jesus returns. Some outworking of his justice is displayed in this broken world. But let's face it, in this world, many evil people seem to get away with a lot, and many people of extraordinary goodness suffer a lot. Wise parents often tell their children, Life isn't fair. Don't expect it to be. Yet at the same time, God is fair. He is perfectly just. But don't expect His justice to be manifested in instantaneous rewards and retribution. His time scale is not ours. Life isn't fair on our time scale. When Jesus returns, however, not only will justice be done, it will be seen to be done. At that time, Christ Himself, and not any of us individuals, is the center of everything. Because of Christ's centrality, punishment is almost defined in terms of being shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the majesty of His power, thereby being punished with everlasting destruction. Verse 9. Conversely, among His saints, His holy people, that same Lord Jesus will be glorified and marveled at among all those who have believed. Verse 10. If Christ were not there, heaven would be hell.